All right. Let's say I have a ball. I do have a ball. And I take my ball and I throw it horizontally. It was when I left my hand. What happens? My ball. My ball back. What does my ball do when it leaves my hand? It starts to drop, right? Follows a half a parabola. Now, what if I throw my ball harder? Give me another try. All right. If I throw it harder, it's going to go farther, right? If I throw it even harder, what will it do? Travel further. Well, let's extend this thought, and this is what Newton did. Extend that. What if I threw it really, really hard? It would fly along the curvature of the Earth, right? Because the Earth is curved. My ball path has a curvature. What if I could throw it hard enough to make that curvature of my ball path match the curvature of the Earth? It would be impressive. What would it do then? It would go around the Earth. It would keep on going. Now, would, that, would we be able to do that here on Earth? No, because does the ball speed remain constant? No, because there's air resistance. But if we get, get to a higher elevation, then it would be possible. This was the thought that Newton had. Now, Newton was thinking about this back in the late 1600s, way before space travel was even a concept. Nowadays, we, we've got hundreds of satellites in the air, and all due to the same thing. They're all traveling with enough speed that their parabola matches the curvature of the Earth. And as long as they maintain that speed, they will stay in that orbit. Once you get up high enough, you get away from most of the air resistance, and it works. Newton's thought was, he, his thought experiment used a cannon, and in order to make the cannonball fly further, you could either shoot it harder with more powder, or raise it to a top, higher elevation. And he figured if you got to a high enough elevation, then you would be able to orbit around the Earth. And that's the whole principle behind satellites. Now, how can we actually figure out how fast a satellite needs to go? Well, we know that there's a centripetal force acting on the satellite because it's going in a circular motion. We want it to go in a circular motion like that. So there's centripetal force M equals m times the centripetal acceleration. Well, centripetal acceleration, as we came up with earlier, is v squared over r. How fast it's traveling, it's tangential velocity, divided by the radius that it's traveling in. All right, so we can substitute those, that in for the acceleration. That's on the left-hand side. What's on the right-hand side? G m m over r squared will be Newton's universal law of gravitation. Because we have a centripetal force, but what is the centripetal force? Gravity. So the centripetal force and gravity are the same thing, so we can set the two equal to each other. Where m is the mass of the satellite, v is how fast it's traveling, r is the radius, the distance out it's traveling. Capital G is the universal constant. M is the mass of the satellite. E is mass of the Earth. Then R squared is the, is the distance that it's orbiting. Yeah. Now, how could I simplify that? I want to simplify that so I can figure out 
how fast do I need to launch my satellite in order to get it into orbit? Okay, I can start doing cross, multiplying cross. What, what can fall out of my equation right away? The M's, this R, and one of those R's. So I'm left with, well, V squared equals G mass of the Earth over the radius, or the velocity is the square root of G mass of the Earth divided by the radius. So what things determine how fast my satellite has to be moving? What are, what, what are my only real variables? Mass of the Earth doesn't vary. The radius. How far up do we want it to have it? If I have a low radius, what has to happen to my speed? It has, it has to be higher. They're inversely related. They're on opposite sides like that. Square root of the whole thing. So the lower my radius, in other words, the lower my, the height of my satellite, the faster it has to go. Because it has to balance out the gravitational attraction. Yep. Now, we know that velocity is 2 pi r over t, the time it takes to go around once. Therefore, how long does it take a satellite to orbit the Earth once? Well, if I take this, I say that 2 pi r over t, square root g mass of the Earth over r. Okay, let's combine those together. How am I going to solve for t? Okay, so I'm going to end up with 2 pi r divided by the square root g mass of the earth r. Now I'm going to simplify that a little bit more. How can I simplify that even more? Okay, I could square everything. That would get rid of my square root, right? And then, well, they won't cancel, actually. If I square everything here, I would have t squared. Well, it's right over here. t squared 4 pi squared r squared divided by g mass of the earth radius, right? So I squared everything, squared all my terms. Well, now I'm, I've got an improper fraction kind of thing. In order to get rid of my, that improper fraction, I'm going to invert and multiply. Remember how to do that? You take that bottom part, you're going to turn it upside down and multiply. So now it's going to be that t squared is going to be 4 pi squared r squared times r over g mass of the earth. t squared is equal to 4 pi squared r cubed g mass of the earth. What's the last thing I can do to simplify that? Now I need to square root things. Then I end up with t. Now I can take the square root of the, this entire side or I can take, since I'm multiplying, square root of individual things. Square root of 4 I know is 2. Square root of pi squared is pi. I can't simplify the rest of it, so I've got the square root of r cubed g mass of the earth. So really, what's the only thing that determines how long it takes a satellite to go around the earth? The radius. How far up in space that we put it. That determines how, how long it takes to go around. It also determines how fast they're moving. Important things to get out of here. 
that equation, that equation. Again, will you have to do a problem like this? Well, not like this. You don't have to derive the equations, but you have to use them. You may have a problem where it says, what's the period of a satellite? Given a radius, mass of the Earth. Or how fast does a satellite need to move at a certain radius? That, know how fast it's moving. Yep, so it's moving at the same rate all the time. Yes? That would be the radius from the center of the Earth to the satellite. So, because it's the radius of the circle that it's traveling, the center of that circle is going to be the center of the Earth. Now, what if we were looking at a different planet, a satellite around a different planet? What would change? Mass of the planet. You'd have to use the mass of that planet, but uh, everything else would be the same. Now, Acceleration due to gravity. We've found that, right? We've, we know that things accelerate at a certain rate. We've measured how fast things fall. How else can we do it? Well, by using Newton's law of universal gravitation. If F, the gravitational force, is equal to G, M, M, E, mass of the Earth, over r squared, okay, that's the universal gravitation, is also equal to the force pulling down on something, its weight. Therefore, the acceleration of gravity is the universal gravitational constants, the mass of the Earth, and the radius of the Earth. Now, if we put in the universal gravitation, and we put in the mass of the Earth, and we put in the average radius of the Earth, what value would we come up with? 9.8. What's the use of this equation? What if we were on a different planet? If we're on a different planet, it, is the acceleration of gravity going to be the same? No, because the mass of the planet and the radius of the planet are different. So this would allow us to use to find out the acceleration on a different planet. If you're on a different planet, like you go to the moon, do you weigh the same? No, because there's a different acceleration of gravity. There's a different mass of the planet and radius. Yes. Okay, there's a one there for another reason. That's why it's a different color. Don't write that. I mean, that's, that's, that's going to come back in a second. So if we're talking about at Earth, or at sea level, acceleration of gravity, and radius equals radius of the Earth. So G, this is just saying, okay, acceleration of gravity at average sea level. We just, I mean, this is just what I said, but I'm rearranging it for another reason here. But if we look at that first equation up there, what does that tell us about the acceleration of gravity in equation number one? 